A couple of years ago, a drawing a friend of mine found this centre gauge on the internet. It's made by a company called Woodpeckers, which I think is woodpeck.com over in the States. And they make a few of these every so often, but they're not cheap, about $400 plus shipping. And the basic idea of this is it's a parallelogram design with some thumb screws so that you can put it tight against your piece of wood, tighten up the thumb screws, and then either draw down the sides of this bar to get a particular spacing for mortise and tenons, or just put a pencil in the center and score a center line on the wood. So they make this thing with various interchangeable bars, it comes in a nice case, it's very well made actually, it's all uh, aluminium and anodized and nice thumb screws and everything, but $400, it's quite a lot for what it is. So a couple of years ago I was asked to make a replica, which I did, uh, unfortunately that's since been handed on as a present to another woodworker, so I've now got to make another replica of this thing. And having done it before, I can see that there are one or two issues with their design. The first thing I found was these thumb screws didn't really pull it in tight enough. So I think on the last one I actually added some springs to, to give it some extra clamp. I also found that, you can see here, this is overhanging quite a bit compared to this one. And this proved a little tricky. These uh, sidebars really need to be a bit longer so that you've got more to grab hold of. So anyway, that's the original. Uh, and now I'm going to have a look at trying to put together a, a redesign to see if I can improve on it. Looking back through my archives, I can't actually find a copy of my design that I did at the time. I've got a few rough notes, but it's not complete. Uh, I'm looking through my photo archives. This is all I've got. Uh, basically, what, I've, what I did here was I got these inserts that screw into the wood, uh, and then there's these plastic thumb screws which then screw into the inserts, and obviously I had the parallelogram coming across here, and I think I ultimately modified it to put some springs on it as well, and then there would have been a bar in the centre here uh, which uh, had a hole in the centre for scoring the line. So because I haven't got exact copies of my original design. I'm going to have to sit down and rework this, so uh, that'll be step one, I guess. Well, having spent a few minutes looking over this, this is uh, basically what I've come up with. Uh, it looks a little bit tidier than the last version. These black lines here are going to be the springs pulling it in at either end, uh, so they're obviously going to go from this configuration to this configuration. These blue bars in the middle are my parallelogram and this blue bar dead centre is the bar that you'd either score on either side or use the centre hole. I've designed this so that it can go from about 16 millimetres up to theoretically about 90 but this is 70 so call it three inches three quarters of an inch to three inches which gives quite a good range and as you can see there's not a lot of overhang here these are going to be about 200 millimeters long uh, and when it's in this configuration there should be plenty here to grab hold of and likewise when it's in this configuration you've got quite a wide uh, grip area and uh, what I'm going to do is actually put a, a, a center dot at either end of this center bar as well just so that you can hold it here and make your mark at this bit here. So down here I've got the pieces that I'm actually going to cut out. I haven't decided what material I'm going to use, possibly an offcut of Perspex to do this because it's quick and simple just to make sure I've got the design right. So I'm going to have a, a 3 mil hole in the middle here which I'm going to populate with a 3 mil uh, bolt which will act as a, a kind of a rivet but be removable if necessary. Then 6 mil holes here which will obviously correspond with the holes in uh, the sidebars and then this is the centre bit which again is going to have some 3 mil through holes with a bit of uh, counter boring just so that I can drop the nut in without it fouling anything and then some uh, the, the holes at the end I think I'm going to drill through 2 mil and then countersink it about 4 mil down and that should just allow a, a pen nib to drop into these holes here so there'll be one in the centre and one at either end. So that's the design, next stage fish around see what materials I've got, see if I can find some springs that will do the job uh, and then we'll start machining bits and putting it together. Well after quite a bit of rummaging around I've uh, done a little experiment on these uh, holes for the pen and these do seem to, to go through. If I get a bit of wood and just put a pen in here that does actually come through so those holes 2 mil with a countersink which uh, I can probably adjust manually at the end if necessary just by going in and spinning that down a bit. That should do. Uh, spring wise I've got choices. Uh, these, are measuring it up, the springs at their smallest need to be 47 millimeters between the centers and this is slightly under so there'll be a bit of uh, tension on there and at, nine, at uh, maximum there'll be about 90 and that stretches quite nicely out to 90. These are actually closer, these are pretty much 
spot on 47s, very slightly under, but these are quite a bit stiffer. Uh, and these are almost exactly right, so these would be the best fit, but again it's quite stiff pulling these out. So I think I might go with the smaller ones, but the point is all three of these sizes actually fit. So spring-wise I'm, I'm pretty good. Uh, turns out that the spring box is actually roughly the size of the finished device, so you can imagine sticking your, your pen in here and uh, scoring up and down. So yeah, I think that'll be adequate. I still have some of these inserts left over from the first one I did. Basically that screws into a, an 8mm hole uh, which obviously is going to have to go into a bit of wood and uh, there's a hex key there just to tighten it up and then this M6 film screw just threads inside there so I've got enough of those left I've got four of those which will do fine I can soon find some screws to put those on and I've got some black uh, Japan cap head screws that will do that this is going to have to serve as the washer which is uh, an M3 nut and bolt so basically I'll need to shorten this down and then obviously uh, just by dropping that in slightly that'll, on the parallelogram part that'll screw in and hold that together so that's done and then the other thing that I need to figure out is what bit of wood am I going to use and I've been looking around and I reckon I need to make the sides about 30 mil deep so I've got a nice piece of sapele here which is 36 which is almost spot on uh, but I'm not keen on using sapele because it does tend to split so I've been rummaging around for bits of oak, which I think is what I used last time, and this is 30 mil, so I could rip some sections off here, and that would probably suffice. Uh, but I have, rummaging through my scraps, found this, uh, and I want to be 16 mil wide on this, and this is 20, so I haven't got too much to take down. And I want to be about 36 mil deep, so again here I haven't got too much to take off. And because I've got two bars which are 200 mil long, this is 500 and something, so if I split this in half, clamp it up, take either side down, spin it over this way, take the top down, take the sides in, cut the corners off, having drilled the holes, I think that'll work, but I'm probably going to come back to that one a little bit later. I think uh, for the sake of this afternoon, I'm just going to find a couple of bits of acrylic, possibly not red. I'll see what else I've got. Maybe I've got some black somewhere, which might work nice. I don't know, I'll have a look, but I'll find some acrylic, which is long enough to cut those initial sections out for the, the centre bar and the two parallels, and uh, we'll get that done and then see what it's going to look like and worry about that bit later. Somewhat predictably, I've got every colour apart from black. If I have got some, I don't know where it is. Um, because I'm using some white oak, I thought the uh, white perspex might be the best ne next best option. So I've set this up and I'm basically going to be cutting the long centre bar up here and then the two parallels uh, down here. I think they'll actually come down to here so I may need to do a bit of rearrangement. But my surgical tools for this operation are going to be a 2 mil hole which I'll come in and do those three. Then I will countersink those 4 mil deep. This is 5 mil perspex so I might go in three and then uh, tie that up at the end. And I've got some 3 mil holes to drill. I need uh, all counter boring down with a, a 7mm and then I've got some 6mm through holes and then finally we'll pocket the whole lot out using a 5mm slot drill.
right, slight cock up there because I think they should actually be on the other side. But uh, I didn't go in very far, so I think we might get away with that. But uh, worst comes to the worst, we'll recut it. Now it's a case of just pocket this out, which I'm doing with a 5mm slot drill. I'll go 3mm deep, then 4.5, and then take the last half mil out, just so I can swing a clamp in here to stop it jumping out at this end. Reasonably well, so I think I'm just going to get some clamps ready so that I can gonna clear that. Maybe I'll leave them down this end so I can just come in here and clamp that when we get towards the edge. And a bit of luck, that'll be okay. Doesn't look too bad. Let's take the protective film off. And yeah, we might get away with that. I think I may have to just re drill. Maybe not. But uh, yeah, okay, I'll do the other two. Okay, slight change of plan. I'm not sure this is showing up on the white. But I figure if I just come in here and cut the the side walls on this, I can then come in and clamp and then just take the ends off because uh, these aren't enormously critical. So we'll give that a go. came out.
Yep. That'll do. And here they are. They're not too bad. Need a little bit of a deburr around the edges. But this uh, little counterbore takes the head and takes the nut and it's below the surface so that's fine. The 6mm holes take the thumb screws so that's fine. Considering the bit got a bit gummed up there's a lot of melted plastic on here and when that happens it tends to melt its way through rather than cutting cleanly so I'm surprised it's done as well as it has. I'll need to just pick those bits out and I think these marking holes yeah they need to be a little bit deeper so I'll just take them down a little bit more I think I took them three mil and I need to go down to about four and then this counter ball needs to be on the other side so I'll put that back in just take those two counter balls down uh, cut these slightly deeper make sure that the pen goes in and leaves a line and then we'll do the wood now because I'm only coming down vertically on this if I slacken this up so that it will move and then simply position this so that's right under the bit looks good and tidy it up that is now my home position and all I've got to do is reference the vertical and now I can just take that down an extra millimetre and of course I can use exactly the same technique on the back let me get those counter balls in the right place right that didn't take very long so I've got the counter balls on the right side now and I've just taken these uh, counter sinks down and I've have checked, so hope we've had a nib. So that goes through and leaves a mark, as does that one, as does that one, and hopefully if I wiggle that around, I don't get a very big hole. So that's fine, they're, they're about right. So that one we can call done. And next stage will be the wood. And according to my sketches, I need two pieces that are 200 mil long, plus a little bit extra to clamp on but I've got a knot at this end which I'm going to have to work around so this is 560 which is certainly long enough uh, so if I maybe allow 20 mil there plus another 20 to clamp that will bring me there and that takes me to 550 which would be <coughs> 275 which is here. So I should have 275 there and 275 here. So if that's my halfway point, then in theory if I split that in half, what I can do is clamp here and take this edge off, swing the clamps around and take this edge off, and turn it on its side, uh, clamp and drill those holes and then take this internal dimension down to 16 mil. I think that'll work and then I can clamp in the center here and then just take the corners off so that'll work it's always a bit tricky when you're trying to work your way around how we're going to clamp a piece but I think that'll work but we'll find out okay here's the plan got this roughly in position I'll reference off what's roughly the center all this is going to come away so not too fussed uh, and then I'm going to reference off these two edges using uh, a 12 mil slot drill just basically bump into it so that it's roughly correct on either end and then we'll just trim this edge down with the slot drill 
and then without moving the workpiece I'll put some clamps on this side and then we'll come in from the other side and take the rest off to leave 35mm. That's the theory. slightly off at that edge but it doesn't matter and it's left a reasonable finish I think with a bit of a sand but I was coming into it so I'll take it back this way another millimetre or so and we'll see if that's a slightly better cut done most of that side, rearranged the clamps, it's uh, not looking too bad and I'm currently down to 35.6 there and 35.44, call it. So if I take another half mil off here uh, we should be down to the correct dimensions. Right, they're both down to just under 35mm. There is some marking on the underside of both of them, so I'm guessing that's part of the grain. Uh, it's certainly, it seems to appear no matter how I cut it and I've sanded them and it's still there, so I think that's just where branches were growing out of the tree perhaps. Uh, but anyway, it's marked up for the next job, which uh, is to take the sides down. And because these are quite deep at 35mm, I need a long series end mill to do this and I'm using a half inch because I haven't got anything metric but with it being CNC it doesn't matter whether it's 12 or 12.7 so uh, we'll put these in clamp them up come in from either side to take that 2 mil off to give it 16 mil uh, then I've got some holes to drill which I'll probably do first actually and then relocate the clamps and just corner them off uh, and that's those two done right I'm in position everything's clamped really tight that's centre-ish, so I'm going to swap over bits, swing out to here, plunge down to 36mm and then we'll take a pass and see how well it cuts. It's had time to cool right down, so we'll try this again and go a little bit quicker this time, I think. Right, 
Right. It's a lot cleaner on this side now, so that's possibly burning, but we can take that off. And we're down to 16.6, 16.7, so I think if I come in just uh, 300 microns on either side, or possibly leave this side as it is. Anyway, I'll face these off a little bit more, see if I can get rid of some of this, and then we'll drill the holes and take the corners. that's come up a lot cleaner than it was so yeah there was definitely some burning going on there but I think that's all right so uh, now I'll just line up for these holes drill those reclamp one step at a time okay that's going to be the screw that I'm using for the springs and I've measured these out and that's 20 mil deep and then over here somewhere will be these little inserts and they're 18.5 mil deep with an 8 mil so I'll probably come down to 20 on both uh, and I'll do these with a, a 2.5 which if necessary I can re-drill it slightly wider I think it needs to be 3 actually but I'll start on the small side and then these I'll just use an 8 mil bit and come down 20 mil some additional clamps there. this one here That's not too terrible. I think there's a bit of a, a sand and a wax. That should come up looking pretty sweet. They've come up pretty good actually. I've given them a bit of a, a light sand. Dimension wise this one is 1605 16 dead and this one is 1606 1605 so they're pretty much spot on uh, which is quite good within 50 microns uh, considering it's timber which does tend to breathe a little bit after you've uh, after you've cut it down there were a few little bits of off cuts not very much everything else turned into sawdust and as expected I did lose an end piece here because of the uh, the knot which I was a bit worried around about at the beginning so that's scrap, and uh, the next stage, I guess, is uh, wax it, I think, first, before I put these in. So I'll give these a little bit of a light wax, and then we'll screw these four uh, inserts in, and then we can start putting it together. Well, the wax is making it come up really quite nice. And hopefully it'll help it slide when it goes against, yeah, that's pretty slippery, when it goes against the wood that's being marked out. So, maybe a little bit more on the bottom. 
right, let's just give that a quick wipe down. Can always give that a bit more afterwards. Right, now this is the tricky part because I've got to get these inserts in nice and straight. Here's my Allen keys. Here we go. Right, let's see how we get on. Wrong size. That's good. Right. It's a little bit out. Okay. Yeah, seems to be fairly central, and it's screwing in pretty well. I don't hear any cracking, that's the main thing. And I want that just flush with the top so it acts like a bit of a washer. Right, that's uh, gone in quite nicely. I'll put the other three in. Okay, they are in. Uh, now what do we need? I need those... I need to make those screws, don't I? Uh, the nut and bolt to fit these. So, I'll quickly go do that. Right, well, the first one's in, but I suspect it's going to work its way loose after a while. So, that's going to need a bit of thread locking compound. Another way I could have done this is if I cut these as a blind hole and tap down to the bottom. I could have screwed this so that it bites into the bottom and just left it a little bit loose. But that then involves getting the uh, length of the shank just right. So I think we'll struggle on with this for the time being and just lock it down. If we can get onto that and just lock it down with uh, a little bit of super glue and hopefully that will hold it. Hopefully that won't wick down. Right, so leave that a couple of minutes. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll think of something else, but I think it'll probably hold. Uh, while I'm doing that, I guess I can put these springs in. But I might need to drill these out. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to re-drill those 3 mil because these, according to the box, are 4.2, so I reckon I probably need at least a 3 mil hole there, and I've only got 2.5, so I'll just quickly do that. That's a bit too deep. And that's not deep enough. Right, that's wobbling a bit. Right, won't go full depth just in case. Right, let's try this again. That's going in a little bit easier now. Although I think I need to get a better screwdriver. Power up. Yeah, tools for the job. screws. I've actually got several boxes of these, big boxes, so uh, I use them for just about everything these days. Right. 
Oh, there we go. Okay. Right. Yep, they're rotating. Oh! I put it on the wrong way round. Right, try it again. Okay, thumb screw time. And the last piece. Right. Oh, actually, that feels pretty good. That's actually better than I was expecting. Uh, so now, what do I need? I need a bit of wood. It's a bit crap, but it'll do. So that should drop onto there like that. And that should slide up and down. And then if I stick a pen in, let's put it in the centre. And that seems to have done a pretty good job. Now, where's the micrometer? Right. Let's measure this out, and I'm getting 30.3, and from this side, whoops, 30.3, 30.3. Well, I think that's probably as close as it's going to get, but yeah, there we go. One automatic center finding gauge. Right. Another job off the list.